154 pounder at six feet. He's got a two inch reach advantage as well. They both weighed in right into the 154 pound limit and both have gained about six or seven pounds coming into tonight's fight unofficially. Punch that numbers, Larry. Look at their two fights. You can see that Wright was just a little bit more active, landed a few more punches. But the real difference was in the jab numbers where Wright landed f an average of 14 per round to just three for McCart. That's where McCart can change the equation. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Winky Wright Bronco McCart fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules that you see in your screen. Jim, real quick, the four criteria that the judges will use to score each individual round clean punching, effective aggressiveness, ring generalship, and defense with a strong emphasis on clean, effective punching. Jim. Two southpaws in the ring as we go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to a doubleheader of HBO World Championship Boxing here in Portland, Oregon, where tonight it's the Rumble in the Rose Garden. Brought to you by Square Ring Incorporated and Jordan Brand, a division of Nike. First bout presented in association with Duva Boxing. All bouts sanctioned by the Oregon State Police Boxing Commission Executive Director, Mr. Jim Cassidy. At ringside for this first world title contest, the three judges assigned. Greg Baker, corner, wearing camouflage and officially weighing 153 and one half pounds. His professional record stands at 45 victories, including 29 knockouts with only three defeats. From Monroe, Michigan, here is the IBF, number one ranked junior middleweight contender in the world, the former WBO world champion, Bronco McCarr. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue trimmed with black and silver. He officially weighs 153 and three quarter pounds and brings a professional record of 43 victories, including 25 knockouts with only three losses. From St. Petersburg, Florida, presenting the reigning, defending IBF junior middleweight champion of the world, Winky. Okay, gentlemen, we met in the locker room. We talked about the rules. We talked about keeping our head up. We talked about watching the rabbit punch and keeping the punches up. Cups are in a great place. Looks good. Your suits are good. You guys ready to go to work? Let's get busy. 40 years ago, the last championship fight held here in Portland between Denny Moyer of Portland and Joey Giambra of Buffalo was for the first junior middleweight title. So coincidentally, at that same weight of 154 pounds, here comes the first idol fight in Portland in 40 years. Fight fans best remember Winky Wright for his near miss against Fernando Vargas in 1999, a fight in which Vargas had to mount a big effort in rounds 11 and 12 to secure a close decision over Wright. Some ringside observers felt Winky had won it. He hopes that Vargas wins next week against De La Hoya because Fernando has opened said, if I win it, I'll give Winky another chance. I'd like to get all three title belts in my possession. De La Hoya has never talked about fighting Winky Wright. And that fight, Jim, was just down the road in Lincoln City, Oregon. Making Wright probably the only titleist in the sport to have twice fought in the state of Oregon. What do you mean, probably? <laughs> McCart's job is to stop Wright's jab, which dominated the first two fights, and somehow get inside and do damage. Well, the worst nightmare for a southpaw is, an, is fighting another southpaw. Believe me, it's not easy for either guy tonight. They're accustomed to being on the wrong side of a, a traditional fighter. Of course, when in 24 rounds against each other, George, they've 
They've developed familiarity with each other's styles that could make this a more fluid fight. You would think they would be familiar, but they aren't. They don't like fighting softball. They have a whole life of fighting the guys on the opposite side. So the jab here, if you can establish one, will make the difference. Both fighters working here in the first round to try to establish their jabs. Winky was the more active fighter in the first minute. McCart has come back at him somewhat in minute two. It's been a good active first round, and there you see Bronco trying to get low to the body. That's part of what he'll need to do to beat Winky Wright. Hard shot by Wright momentarily knocks McCart off balance. Winky says that he's become a harder puncher in the past few years, realizing that he needs to create excitement among fight fans and that power punching is what does it. Come up, come up. What's your hands, guys? Let's see, we got something? Uh -oh. Headbutt. Got something? Okay, let's get it. No Touch blood. Place. Let's go. Here we go, right here. An early piece of good fortune for Wright. What's good about both fighters, they're circling one another. No one is going straight back or straight forward. Fighters a circle. Ten seconds. That's what you like to see professional fighters do. Keep two, that circle. Two pretty, it's pretty slick pros who know how to fight, George. Okay, yes. I see that. Let me take a look. There ain't even a mark there. Don't worry about it. It's not even red. Breathe. Breathe. Wink. When you're catching his jab, counter with yours. Counter with yours, and every now and then come back with the left hand, too. Okay. And don't stand still. Thank you, Bill. Good work. Keep that jab active. Keep the jab active. Use it and hook that man. You don't keep his hands up there. Hook him in and wait. A headbutt that could have ended this fight, but no damage. Bronco McCart's corner asking him to hook off of the jab. McCart needs to land more punches to make his attack effective. By CompuBox numbers in round one, he landed only six out of 45. Winky Wright, 15 out of 39 for a much higher percentage. 84 of their 96 total punches in the round were jabs. So it's been a jabbing contest so far, and that's the way round two begins as well. Now McCart tries to hook off the jab, as his corner asked him to do. Combination by right. Sometimes your trainer's got to tell you to throw these shots. You're never going to see an open with a good defensive fighter like uh, Winky Wright. You just got to throw the punch anyway. I'm not sure where Winky Wright is shaking his head about. He caught three clean punches. Yeah, look out of there. That's when they shake their heads. That's it, guys. Two hands. Watch those heads. Watch those heads. Watch it. Watch it, eh? Winky tells McCart to watch his head and then pops him twice with the jab. You know, both fighters are pretty skilled defenders. When Winky Wright fought Vargas, he had the reputation of being a cute southpaw. He changed his style for that fight and has fought in this more aggressive boxer puncher style since that time. So look out, come on. Can, he, can he step it up look another out, level to attract a big fight? That's a good point. His seventh round TKO, Jason Papillon in Miami on the undercard of Roy Jones, Glenn Kelly, looked like the kind of fight plan that Fernando Vargas might have put together. Boxing early and then slugging away to knock Papillon out of there. Neither fighter has made the mistake of letting their back touch the ropes yet, which is good strategy. That jab is just really picking on uh, Winky Wright. He's putting out on the excellent left jab, and he's just taking his toll from the later. Right jab. Right jab. <laughs> he is a natural right-hander fighting southpaw. 
like as Michael Moore did. As Oscar De La Hoya does, a natural, a natural right-hander or a natural southpaw who fights conventional. It puts the stronger hand in front is the bottom line. And that so jab he has toes. really is taking his toll. Both of you. Winky targeting the jab, changing speeds on the jab. Ten seconds. And McCart trying to give as good as he's getting. Two excellent rounds okay. to start the fight. Thursday, September 12th, catch the regular season premiere of Inside the NFL. Join us for a brand new season with the best new team in the league. As Bob Costas and former All-Pro wide receiver Chris Carter join mainstays Chris Collinsworth, Dan Marino, and Wanda Sykes on the show The Pros Watch. We'll bring you exclusive highlights from opening week as well as giving you the first in-depth look at next week's game. Now in its 26th season, Inside the NFL premieres each Thursday night at 8 p.m. right here on HBO. You don't keep his hands up there. Keep throwing them punches. Get inside. Don't let do, do, do nothing. Hit that body. You understand? Good work. Come on, champ. Come on, champ. Even, you know, even though he's blocking, good. even though he, even though you're blocking everything, mouthpiece, come mouthpiece, back. Mouthpiece. Come back. Come right back. Come right back. Winky Wright. Back. Excuse me. Bronco McCart was offered fifteen thousand dollars to wear a casino tattoo on his back and rejected it, even though he's getting only $75,000 for this fight because he said it would be a bad example for the Sunday schoolers who he teaches. And even though he was an outspoken critic of ESPN's policy against allowing fighters to wear such markings on their backs during fights, McCart was the one who said, hey, wait a minute. Why is it the fighters who are always criticized for trying to make a few extra dollars? So he stuck up against ESPN for the policy, yet declined to wear the advertising here. I agree with ESPN's policies. I agree with McCart that it's tough on fighters. Jabs in round two, right landed 15 out of 50, McCart six out of 37. So numerically, according to CompuBox, George, Wright is winning the jabbing contest. Oh, he's winning the fight, period, with his right jab. And that's why McCart better just stop boxing him and start fighting. This is the 27th round. If a guy's very... out boxing you, you got to start fighting. That's all there is to it. You know, it's, it's, it's a tough pill for McCart to swallow because McCart's a good boxer. He's probably just not quite good enough to beat Winky Wright. You want to establish yourself, you just got to go for it sometimes. Yeah, Break the motor, fight. But if you've been trained your whole life to box, as Bronco has, it's tough, isn't it, George, yeah, to go in there? It's hard to change both. Yeah, but, but Winky Wright did. Now you see the circle is broken. McCart is starting to go straight back occasionally, and his back is hitting the ropes. Good left hand shot upstairs okay, by McCart. No, no, no. He gets one into okay, the body. That's it, guys. Let me break. Okay, step back, step back, step back. Okay, right here. Go spit. But Winky Wright is starting to be able to pick his shots. Body here, right hook upstairs, left cross from time to time. As Wright adds more and more wrinkles to his attack. Now McCart winging shots as he tries to step up the aggression a little bit. That's what George Foreman recommends. And Wright comes right back. Punching. When you get done with your punching, don't stand there. 
Don't one stand. In the ring. Don't stand in the there. Ring. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, sir, Here, watch out. One in the ring. I'll get out. I'll get out. Okay. One in Don't the stand ring. there when you're done. Go off to the angle and come back in. You got the formula. It's working. Three times around at least. Yeah. Explode in there. When you start beating them with that jab. Use that feint more. Use that feint. Double jab. Double feint. Triple feint. Keep juking them all the time. Then explode. I don't need them all. Okay. Give me some Give me all right. Earlier in the round, there was this flurry from Winky Wright. A clean left hand on the jaw, but later in the round, Winky Wright flurried. And then as it looked like he was going to stop George, he flurried again. That's what you do. It's like sprinting. You hit a guy with five shots, it takes everything out of you, and you rest. So next time, fake him. Don't put so much on it, and rest, and then go back after him again. Oh, Errol, how do you have it through three? Get those okay, Jim. Up. You know, I've got a 29-28, two rounds to one, Ronald Winky Wright. Jim, I gotta tell you something. In the scoring criteria that we went over before the fight started, we talk about defense. 25% of the scoring by a judge. Look at the great defense by Ronald Winky Wright. Hands held high, elbows in tight. He catches the jab. Virtually all of his punches, McCart's punches, are caught on the elbows, which don't count. They're not in the scoring area. On the other hand, Winky gets through as you see here. I'm gonna get a bump there, you guys. In round three, by copy box numbers, Bronco McCart started score, trying score, to throw guys. more power shots. Taking heed of George Foreman's advice to fight, McCart doubled right in power shot output 24 to 12. But Wright still winning the jabbing contest. Step back, come on, step back, step back, step back, right here. Oh, keep up, let's go, that's long. Wright's a fighter with a lot of athletic skill, but he doesn't allow that to tempt him out of his envelope. He stays in that technical mode and boxes you from start to finish. McCart trying to get to the body, right elbow in exactly the right position. I like the idea that he's throwing punches, whether they land effectively or not. Just keep this guy thinking about defending himself rather than poking that jab in your face. That's what McCart is doing. Cart works you low to the body. With your head. You're both coming in with your head. You're both doing it. Get your hands up. You ready? Let's go. Referee Mike Fisher from Troutdale, Oregon, time, time. warning both fighters. of a boxing match seconds, in Portland. Ten seconds, ten seconds. I like it. Okay, that's it. Nice one. One third of the way through. Good fight. Third edition of Bronco McCart and Winky Wright. There's Roy Jones as he awaits this showcase in Portland, largely for the benefit of his friends at Nike. Roy Jones is one of 14 fighters, or 14 athletes, I should say, who carry the banners for the Jordan label at Nike. He'll be fighting Clinton Woods. Sounds like a housing project in Arkansas. That'll be coming along next. Sounds to me more like a place where Robin Hood hit out when he wasn't in Sherwood Forest. When the throw one, throw another. He's not back to throw another. Yeah, yeah. That's why I'm in here, just to, to you, get in there. Huh? Oh, Stay offensive. Keep that jab on his ass. Winky Wright has never fought in his hometown of St. Petersburg. He fought 12 times in France. He's fought in eight different nations on four different continents. International man of misery, he calls himself. Winky Wright. 
Now this fight, this boxing match turned into a fight. It benefits Bronco because that's the only way he can just keep that jab to the side of Winky Wright. Make it a fight. McCart with an edge in power connects again in round four. Wright throwing 20 more punches, 71 to 51 for McCart. McCart probably shouldn't try to worry about matching Wright punch for punch, but rather, as you point out, George, get to the body and do some damage. You can win this boxing match. Too much jab by Winky Wright. We're gonna get the point. Okay, you turn, you turn. Cart smiling as Wright pummels him in the face with that right jab. McCart would just move after every punch he throw rather than standing in one place the jab wouldn't hit him so much stands right there and waits for it pace begins to slow in round five they fought at a relatively fast pace through the first four crowd eager to see more action there's some booing from the rafters you get him up that's a warning one okay here we go Card is warned for low blows. I didn't see anything that was egregiously low. It was a little low, but harmless. Didn't bother right. <laughs> Nothing down low is harmless. <laughs> well, but it was me. on the side, on his pad. Nah, it's not harmless, believe me. See any movement by Bronco to the right, and that right jab just doesn't land. McCart. McCart chanced a big left hand over the top. Okay, no, no, check it. Right chanced the big left hand over the top. McCart saw that as a chance to come back to Wright's body. Another flurry. Then they touch heads again, and the fight becomes more eventful. Just like that. I know you did. Check his cup in the back. Lean up a little bit. Your cup's coming up in the back. Keith, that's you. You check. Two fouls there, ref. Damn, grab the water. Keep the jab working. You, you got him now. You're in control of yeah. this fight now. Try to finish with the hook sometimes. Yeah. And just keep stepping one way. Keep, keep stepping to the left all the time. Cut yeah. him off. And then work. You're doing fine. Don't let him eat. You back him up. Back him up with your jab. Okay. Don't walk in. Just straight in. You got a jab. You got to use your angle. Franco, you put your combinations together. You befuddle this man. Keep them together. You got me? You do Winky right. Still the aggressor. Good straight left hand. In that, in that shot, you saw him fighting almost in conventional style and coming over with the left hand, switching from southpaw. begin to add up for Wright. CompuBox numbers through five. Wright 107 out of 322. McCart 75 out of 295. And McCart throwing about 50 punches per round to about 70 punches per round for Wright. And now a point deduction. Okay, you know it, you know it. Okay, here we go, right here. Well, all the more illustration to McCart that he's not gonna win the boxing match. Yeah. Let me correct what I said before. That was not Winky Wright in a conventional style. He was in his southpaw style when he landed that left hand in the last round. Okay, Blake, step back. Come on, here we go. Come on. Come on. Come on. All right, right here. It's good punch. Good punch. Okay, Blake, step back. Let's keep him up. Keep him up. Right here. McCart appears to be slowly yielding. The right's quicker hands, more assertiveness. He's been there before. 
Wright won the decision the first time around. Wright won the decision the second time around in McCart's home area of Michigan. It was a split decision in the first fight. So look out, look out. This guy, Winky Wright, uses the referee. Whenever something is not going his way, he looks to the referee to stop the action. Look around. Get suspicious. Most times it's going his way, though. Amen. <laughs> okay, that's another point. Another point. Another point. This is tough on McCart. There's the second deduction for low blows. And I honestly don't believe he has landed a powerfully damaging low blow. So now, in theory, the next low blow from McCart would prompt a disqualification. Which, which, you know, which would be criminal. Because this has not been a dirty fight. There haven't been really blatant low blows. It's, it's over-officiousness. Yes, yeah, the referee being coached by uh, Winky Wright. Well, that, that's part of what happens when you've got a a fighter of Wright's vast experience and a referee with considerably less. That's what happened. Big market fights. Fighters. Yeah. Sit back, sit back. All right, right here. And it's be a good idea for the referee to stop calling shots now and let, let a few rounds go. Well, he's made his presence felt with the two-point deduction against McCart in this round. We're halfway through a scheduled 12, and by now, oh no, that's a low blow. That was a low blow. That's a legitimate low blow. Right here, let's go. And referee Mike Fisher neglects or chooses not to DQ McCart. We're grateful for that. And as these 254 pounders square off, watching them in Big Bear, California, Oscar De La Hoya on the left, Fernando Vargas on the right, one week away from their confrontation next Saturday night in Las Vegas for supremacy in the 154 pound class. We'll be talking to De La Hoya and Vargas both between fights. When you're doubling up on your jab and you throwing your combinations, you're scoring on this guy. Start letting them hands go. Keep this guy off. He wants to jab, fire back, straight left hands. You can hit him with them straight left hands and come with the hook, double up to the hook to the head. All right, let's see just how low some of these blows were. That was not the one that was called. If it was, that would even be worse. That was low. a little bit low, no doubt about it. Low. That was a low blow. And that's the one that, that should have been penalized, but Holy since two God. previous penalties had been called, he was allowed to get away with that one. Copy box numbers on I jabs through round points. six. Right, 86 out of 292. McCart, 29 Jesus. out of 207. More and okay, more, right here. the copy box numbers simply demonstrate that Wright is winning the boxing on, match, and McCart will have to do more to make it a fight. Harold, how do you have it through six? Okay, Jim, that 10 7 round in round six is going to hurt Bronco McClutt. 59 53, five rounds to one. Ronald Winky Wright. Bronco loses, you know, he lost the round. That would make it 10 9. Then he loses two more points for low blows. That makes it 10 7 in round six. Jim, I got to tell low you something. Blows, come on. This low blow by these low blows by Bronco McCart fall right at the line with what I was talking about about Winky Wright's defense. Remember, hands down. held high, elbows in tight. Bronco wants to bring his guard down, so he's throwing shots under Winky Wright's elbows, and they're going low. And referee Mike Fisher, who fought over 400 amateur fights himself, sees the low blows. He's taking the points. Close. This is close. professional close. prize fighting. So you're not impressed with Mike Fisher's 400 amateur fights, Larry? Maybe he was a great amateur fighter. Well, the truth is, with or without the deductions, McCart wasn't likely to win on the scorecards. If anything, the referee could be doing him a favor by further underlining for him the point that he must go at right aggressively somehow. Look, guys. Look out of there. 
work out of there. Get my, my push. There go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay, no push. Let's go, step back. Here we go, right here. McCart throws these flurries and then musticiously right the stops. Right on the button. He's got another As though point. he's lost his win. He's got another point. Now this is a third he's point deduction point. from Mike Fisher for low blows. Here we go, right here. You all right? All right. Of course, man. And a disgusted McCart slaps gloves with right. George Winky Wright is very eager to get the kind of attention that would put him into the discussion with Deloy and Vargas. So he's winning the fight easily. Does okay, he start to back, think break, to himself, boy, a knockout would look better on my record? And I don't think he's winning the fight so easily as you would say, but if he can get a devastating knockout, I mean, we will be talking about him for a month or two. He's in the big picture. That ought to have him thinking knockout. gives McCart a chance. When Wright commits to one of those big left-hand punches, Bronco gets to come back to the body. Ten seconds. McCart showing some heart. And lands one big left hand on Wright to punctuate the round. Good work, champ. Good work. Right below Finish with the hook a little more up behind that left hand. Make sure you got room. You're smothering yourself with that yeah. left hand. Breathe, breathe. Underneath. They're working his eyes, man. He's starting to swell up. Put that jab to work. Straight left hands. Hook, 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 hook. hook. You hear me? Hell with what the guy's down taking down away there. from you, the damn idiot. You just go ahead and do what you got to do. You understand? Don't worry about that rounds they gave. Here's a replay. That was the low blow. Well, Wright had his glove on the left shoulder. He was pulling him down a little bit, but he hit him with the right hand, not the left hand, so. Available for the penalty. Get him up. Get him up. Right here. Round eight of a schedule 12. Already three points have been deducted from Bronco McCart for low blows. Neither fighter in, in 30 odd rounds has been able to really hurt his opponent. 31 rounds. So McCart's job here to stop Winky Wright seems virtually insurmountable based on what's happened before. Card acknowledging in discussion with us yesterday that he didn't feel as though he had ever hurt Wright in the 24 preceding rounds, and he certainly didn't feel as though Wright had hurt him. One guy being put in the corner is painted in the corner. He's going to have to fight himself out. That's what McCart is. But all those points taken away, maybe we'll try for a knockout. Change okay, things. Come on, let's go. Get Come on, desperate. On, well, you heard McCart's uh -oh, dad, Gene, right chief here. second there, or uh, rather the second in the corner, saying, uh, forget about the referee and do what you have to do. We presume that go, means do some count, physical let's damage right and look here. for a knockout. Point deducted. I don't think I've point. ever seen four points deducted right, for low go, blows right without I'm not the fight sure. being three tough. Five, right here. I'm, I'm not sure I've seen three. I'm pretty sure I've never seen four. Harold, do you know any precedent for this? Four points deducted for low blows, no DQ? Well, without question, I don't remember four. Obviously, we all remember three, and Andrew Galata, Riddick, Bo, both fights. I mean, you know, after the third point, the referee usually calls a disqualification. So Michael Fisher giving him, uh, giving Brock McCart every chance to win this fight. Or at least to stay in yeah, it. To stay in it, exactly. Well, fans.
Texas and Portland waited 40 years for a title fight, and clearly Fisher doesn't want it to end on a disqualification. Another point right here. It's the fifth point deduction. Another point. That's it. That's he doesn't get no more breaks. Let's go right here. Hey, you guys want to fight? Okay. Right here. Let's go. Okay. Winky right Let's asking. Go with Fisher. Let's go with Fisher. And now Fisher decides to apply disqualification. Well, that was strange. No, I think he just decided not to fight anymore. You think Broncos had enough? He's had enough. Well, I, I find that that encouragement from his that. father in the corner to not to ignore the referee and do what you have to do. Rather odd. I mean, wasn't he saying if you have to hit him low, hit him low? I hope that wasn't what he meant to say. No, I think don't worry. Don't get discouraged. Do you fight your fight? That's what he was trying to tell him. Yeah, I think he was trying to say exactly. Don't let the referee get into your head and ruin whatever aggression you can mount in there. I believe that was that. Well, it wasn't the same as saying just go go out and keep hitting him low. Yeah. But gradually, McCart just simply was losing more. Uh, uh, one-sidedly than in either of the previous fights. We usually say in the rematch, a fighter who won the first fight wins a, more by a bigger margin. Now it's been in the third fight that that has happened. I think we can confidently say we will not see a fourth fight between Winky Wright baby, let's do it, and baby. Bronco McCart. Yeah, but, uh, I'm a homeboy locked. Even the ones they've worn him out against me. Right. We're low. You know, they're clean shots. They're hitting skin, they're clean. Right. When they're hitting down there, they're obviously low. Um, but you guys have a lot of respect for each other. I mean, that's... Baby, baby, I'm with you, baby. Jamie, I'm with you, baby. Boy, you, I'm you, with you, bro. I'm with you, baby. Hey, I'm baby. Hey, I'm with you, uh, baby. Wilson McKee. Let's do it, baby. <laughs> it all happened in oh, rounds baby, six. Seven and eight as the point deduction festival for low blows began in the sixth. It was like he was asking to be disqualified. I think Harold made a good point when he talked about how Wright's defense is effective enough. There's really not a target there. So McCart searching for a target, kept wandering lower to try to find it, I guess. I think that's a, that's a good guess. Yeah. I, I think he just decided to throw low. Didn't feel that he would get worn that much or points taken away, and it just went against him. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars on the disqualification here. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Following repeated warnings and point deductions for low blows, referee Mike Fisher has to call a halt to the bout. For disqualification, the official time is 2 minutes 33 seconds of round number 8. The winner by DQ, he is still the IBF Junior Middleweight Champion of the World, Winky Ryan. So Winky Wright racks up yet another victory and holds on to his 154 pound title belt. CompuBox numbers show that overall Wright landed 41 more punches than McCart, threw 29 more punches than McCart, landed at a higher percentage. If the next number shows jabs, that will be very one-sided in Wright's favor. And so it is. Wright landing 63 more jabs, throwing 120 more, and landing at nearly double the percentage of Bronco McCart. Ultimately, the fight was decided by the referee's handling of the low blow situation. That's a point. That's a point. And this was the That's first point. point deduction against McCart in round six, followed by the second point deduction against McCart in round six. Then later, there was a third low blow in round six for which no point deduction was issued. Then yet another day, point deducted in round seven at which point a disqualification could have been in order, at least by the numerical standard we've seen before. 
Point deduction number four in round eight. That's the point at which we all said we had never seen a guy allowed four separate point deductions without being disqualified. Then a fifth point deduction, or so it seemed. But shortly after that, when the referee turned to McCart and said, you want to keep going, Bronco appeared to say, not particularly. And that was the end of that. Larry Merchant stands by in the ring. Thank you, Jim. Uh, congratulations, Winky. Why was this fight different than the previous ones? Well, like I said, I ain't fight in a while. A couple of months rest, rust, you know what I'm saying? But Bronco came to fight. You know, he just kept throwing a lot of low blows. Why do you think that was? I was getting to him. If you notice, I was catching him with more left. I kept hurting him, and I felt he was getting tired, so I would just break him down with a jab and then try to go to the body and come with the left. Any of those low blows seriously hurt you? Two of them caught me under the under there, so that them two hurt. But the other one was just catching me low, but on the cup. But at, every time I said I kept coming right back, I ain't want that to be a stoppage. I said I'm good to fight. Let's go. I ain't take no rest or nothing. All right, give us your unbiased opinion of what's going to happen next week between Vargas and De La Hoya. Well, I hope it's going to be a great fight. You know, on me, I'm hoping uh, Vargas win, but I think De La Hoya may outbox him. But Vargas real tough, and I got to, you know, take my hat off to him. He'll warrior, and we'll see what happens uh, next week. I'll be there, and hopefully I can get the win. So you're picking De La Hoya? If I had to bet, De La Hoya. All right, thank you, Wiggy. <laughs> Jim? The best in the world. <laughs> thank you very much, Larry. So, uh... There's the stated case for Winky Wright, who hopes to put himself into the discussion with the winner of Fernando Vargas against Oscar De La Hoya next week. Meanwhile, still to come here this evening, the light heavyweight title fight in which Roy Jones will defend his various and assorted light heavyweight championship belts. He told us yesterday he has seven of them against the man chosen by one of the various governing bodies as the number one contender, Englishman Clinton Woods. And Woods is seen by some as a 100 to 1 underdog against Jones in the fight upcoming. Meanwhile, we remind you of upcoming programming here on HBO. Mark your calendars.